day that I got hit by the ID, I had already been awake for two days straight. It was early in the morning. The sun was just coming up. It was actually a beautiful day. I took about three steps more into the alley. And then I took one step. I fell right down to my face. There would be ambushes after blast. I saw all this blood on me. Blood on my hands, blood on the ground. I realized it was coming from me. We started to push our patrol out. And uh, one of the places that we walked through first to get to where we were going was a market area. Um, markets on both sides of the street, you know, vendors, people selling things, kids, things like that, just what you'd usually expect. And, um, but that day things were definitely different when we walked through there. People were not coming up to us. Kids were not coming up to us, which was something that happened on a regular basis. These kids always wanted chocolate from us. Always wanted something, you know. They didn't have a whole lot to look forward to. Third world country like that, there ain't much for a kid to look forward to on a day. But that day, like I said, we pushed through the market area and things were off. And I could, I could feel that they were off. Well, I was about halfway in our patrol. We had uh, about seven men ahead of me and we were dispersed about 30 yards apart from each other. Six other men turned right and entered an alley. Right before I followed suit and entered that alley with them, I turned to my right and I looked down the road at the market area. I saw the group of these kids and people staring at me, staring at us, you know. And I didn't quite sure, or I wasn't quite sure what that, you know, what was going on here. Why are they looking at us like that, you know? They always look at us, but it was just different. So I pulled my ACOG up and, I, you know, I looked down that way and didn't think much of it after that. I just turned in the alley and, you know, what are you going to do? So push on. I took about three steps more into that alley and then boom, bomb just went off. My first reaction, I didn't even know I was hit. I yelled out, we got hit. Um, I took, I turned around, I took one step, I fell right down to my face. I wasn't sure why, so much adrenaline was pumping through me. I, I just wanted to to get up and get to a position where I felt safe, where I felt like I wasn't in danger, right in the blast zone. They had things called daisy chains where a blast would follow another blast. There would be ambushes after blast. So there was good reason for me to get up and get out of there. I went to push myself up again. I saw all this blood on me, blood on my hands, blood on the ground. I realized it was coming from me. Right in that moment is when I got the fear in me whenever I, far, I, I, I finally started to realize like I had been hit, I'm injured. I realized I didn't have my weapon. I guess I lost it in the blast. Yeah, I yelled out, we got hit, we got hit, you know. Um, Lance Corporal Horner, one of the Marines I served with was the first guy to get to me. He pulled me up, dragged me over to the wall. The Marines made a, a security perimeter around me. And the Navy corpsman came over and started to go to work on me. Well, in truth, he came over. But when he saw the hole in my leg, he just froze. Horner had to, you know, get him going. Come on, let's go. Let's get this tourniquet on this guy. I was scared. I was scared of the way that they were reacting to me. So my first question to them was, do you think I'm going to live? You think I'm going to survive? Like... I wanted to know in that moment, I was terrified that I was about to lose my life right there on the side of that road. Of course, they, they tell me, yeah, you're going to you're gonna be all right, man. You're going to be all right. I started to feel the pain come in. When the pain came on, I asked for morphine. All right, well, I didn't ask for morphine. I, I just asked for, you know, is there anything you could do? I knew in my mind that he could give that to me. Maybe it would numb out this pain. He denied me, which immediately in my mind, I went, why would he deny me? There's only one reason he denied me. It's because I've already lost too much blood. And I had, there's a picture of me and I was pale. I had been in the Iraq for three months, but in this picture, I was pale as a ghost. Well, my squad leader come over and um, I guess to defuse the situation, try to keep me from going into shock. 
he come over and he wanted to snap a picture. That did help because in the moment I, I tried to act a little funny. I, I, you know, I took a pose and I let him snap that picture. Shortly after that, a medevac showed up and um, they got me out of there. It was a medevac by Humvee. And I'd say 15 minutes later, I was uh, in surgery, getting my leg worked on. I had been hitting the left leg. I had been hitting the left hip. I had been hitting the right wrist. I had shrapnel stuck in my, my flak jacket and my groin protector even. I, I didn't realize it, but I had been sprayed all up and down. Next week on Home Promise Heroes. I could hear my mom screaming behind me. Watched his eyes roll back in his head. I had no emotion for it. I didn't even care what I was doing. I was on a downward spiral, and that was the beginning. Was the beginning. 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 Be sure to subscribe below for weekly episodes, and follow Home Promise on Facebook for updates, special clips, interviews, and much more.